obviously what brought us together is the game of football, right? And I can't speak on, like I have a 707 uh, program. It is the best organization in the in world, the career, in the nation. Yes. You feel me? And it's not just because I got the most money. No, I, I literally tell these kids, I'm like, bro, the game of football changed my life. When I started taking this just as serious as me breathing, no, I became untouchable. I became militant. I became devoted. I became disciplined to, no, I can't eat that, bro. I can't go out, bro. I can't look at that, bro. I can't, I got to be up, da, 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 da. And I didn't gain that mentality until I got to junior college, you know? So for me, it's pouring into these kids. It's like, bro, no matter what your family dynamic is, if you commit to this game, I promise you, it can bring you fruits that you didn't even imagine. God has been so good to me. And when I see DeBron, it's like, you're a perfect example of that. And I done had them all, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So from, from where you are right now, I think, you know, when we talk, it's always chatter in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, you like the team mom, the unincorporated team mom, for kids that they want to go over to Brown House, Miss Brandy, like let's come over y'all. Da, 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 da. What what is that like now? I get fulfillment and enjoyment out of that mm -hmm. because it's like I always say that everybody be like, "Oh, you said you hold your son down, like you so strong." But no, like I look at my son like that's my hero. Mm -hmm. I admire his strength. I am I have admiration for him because. Going through everything that he's been through in the life, I can kind of just rewind a little bit and he, he just give you an overview of the things that he's been through. Mm -hmm. Nine months. Well, when I was four months pregnant with him, the feds raided my house. They took his father away when I was four months pregnant and he ended up getting sentenced to 20 years in prison. Mm. Uh, a year after he was in prison, he was at this facility here in Atlanta on the boulevard the medium that they have on the boulevard. He was probably there for two months and um, he ended up having an asthma attack. And I don't know, you know, they try to cover it up however they do, but he ended up passing away in prison mm. from complications due to his asthma. So at nine months, my- So DeBron never seen his father? He seen him through a glass when he was in the county. When I first had him, I used to go to the county and we went to see him in July and he finally was able to hold him so he got a picture with his dad, that one picture right. when my son was nine, no, DeBron was seven months. He got a picture with his dad from when we went to go see him and two months after that he died. Mm. So he lost his father at nine months, right? So then after that, that was 06. 2008, I catch a case, you know? In 2009, I had to turn myself in to do 10 years in prison. While I'm serving my prison sentence, my father got, my indictment got superseded and my father got indicted and was my co-defendant on a conspiracy charge. So the only father that he ever known, because he used to call my dad, daddy, mm -hmm. the only father he ever known got taken away from him too. Mm. So he lost his daddy. He died at nine months. He lost his mama two years after that to do 10 years in prison. And a year after I got indicted, my daddy got sentenced to eight years in federal prison. Um, my mom, like... That's why I say I just got to commend my family, man, because it's like my mom was going back and forth from seeing my daddy in prison, seeing, seeing me in you. prison, yeah. to the point I told my mama, like, yo, don't come see me, man. Go see daddy. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my sisters bring my son, and she still a come, Correct. but I it was no pressure because my father was older. Mm -hmm. My daddy went to prison when he was 65 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I was more so worried about my father more than me. I'm young. I caught my case at 26. So mm -hmm. I'm like, it's cool, whatever. But my daddy was 65. And I didn't know that when my dad got sentenced, you know, my family kept a lot of stuff from me. I didn't know my dad was diagnosed with the first stage of dementia. Mm -hmm. So not only did he go to prison at 65, he went to prison and he was sick with a, a debilitating disease that right, messed with his mind. Mm -hmm. You know, so... The great thing, the outcome about that was like three or four years into my father's sentence, Obama changed the compassionate release. And compassionate release in federal prison is when you have a debilitating disease that progressively gets worse and doesn't get better. 
they act like it's good for the family, but really, if you sick, they don't want to deal with you. They don't want to pay your medical expenses, so they send you home basically to die. Mm -hmm. You know, so my dad ended up getting a compassionate release in 2015, and. My prison was always a prison who they get they started first thing like we had MP3 players first they right. have like we was like the pilot program for right. things that they try to integrate into the prison system and we had just got Skype like it's like a Skype or Zoom mm -hmm. and you can pay for video visits but you only could do maybe like three a week but I already had one scheduled for my son because I wanted to see my son on video visit but my dad just ended up coming home so. The first time I seen my dad, like I said, my family didn't tell me a lot, I think, to protect me because they didn't want to worry me while I was away. Mm -hmm. But the first time I seen my dad, now you know how me and my dad was like yeah. this. Like, that was my road dog. But but to to that, we're going to stay here for a second. Your dad, when you started, and, it's, and, and, and some would say, no, that's not right. And some would say, okay, I see him trying to protect you. When you really started moving wait, right? Mm -hmm. When you really started moving narcotics or selling drugs or whatever, your father was like... He didn't know at first. Mm -hmm. I was doing it behind his back, but when he found out, he's like, what the f*** you doing? Like, sit your down. And he put himself on Front Street, like, on the forefront to keep me out the way. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that we both end up getting in trouble. You know right. what I'm saying? We, how things played out and how the situation played out, we both end up end up being co-defendants, mm -hmm. you know? And me and my dad, we got sentenced on the same day in court. I went first and he went right after me. And the judge told my mama, so black lady judge, she was like, this is a really, really big catastrophe for your family. I really feel bad for you. Like, I couldn't imagine like you losing your husband and your daughter for a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like the judge told my mom that, and that was just a very, very sad day. You know, and when I was leaving out the courtroom, just the pain and hurt I seen on my mom's face will always stick in my mind. You know what I'm saying? And that right there, when I seen how my actions affected my family, and when I on sentencing day, when I walked out that courtroom in them shackles, I made it a point to myself that when I went in, I was gonna come out a better person. Yeah, that I wanted to change so, my life. So take me back to the Skype, like when you was. So like on the Skype. You know, he come home and I'm like, oh, my daddy home. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. damn, I can't wait to see my daddy because I kind of knew something was wrong. Because when he used to see me, like in federal prison, if, if you have a media family, y'all can email. Mm -hmm. And I used to, when they approved our email, I'm emailing, daddy, what? No response. Like crickets. So I'm like, damn. I know he don't know how to use a computer, but I know somebody can type for him. Right, right, right. And then like I get mail and I open up the card like, this ain't my daddy handwriting. Mm -hmm. Like somebody else is writing it for him. Correct. So I'm like, but they still not telling me nothing. But I'm just keeping that in the back of my mind. Like, okay, cool, whatever. Like, I got a car for my daddy, so I was just happy, you know? And when I seen him on Skype for the first time, you know, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm about to see him. Like, I'm just so geeked up, like, so happy he home. Like, I didn't care about me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted my daddy to come home. You know what I'm saying? And when I seen him on Skype, I'm like, daddy, what's up? Like, and he was like, hey. He was like, you pretty, what's your name? <laughs> and I'm like, my name? You mean like, what's my name? Like, he didn't know who I was. Mm. But it was like, that right there, that, it just, it just it broke me. You. Like, damn, like, he don't know who I am. Like, me, you don't know who I am. Mm. And that's when we start getting into, you know, they was upfront and honest with me then, letting me know, like, what was going on with my dad and stuff. And it's like, it's funny because it's like, I'm just gonna like my dad. Like when you had dementia, it's like you transgress back, so you can remember a lot of stuff from your past, mm -hmm. but not things that's like right now. Right. So my dad, now that I know, now that I'm older, I guess he had like some pimp days or something when he was <laughs> when he was back in the day. He used to do like in Detroit. I guess he got like had some hoes or something. Right, like he right, did right. pimp stuff back in the day. So one day I'm on Skype with him or whatever, right? And I'm like. What up? We talking. So now I'm used to it. Like, mm -hmm. so I just joke with him, play with him. So, yo, out the blue, my daddy was like, my mom and him always be sitting on the couch together on Skype. So he like, hey. I'm like, what? He said, girl, you pretty. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah. He said, girl, I'll put you on that track. I was like, what? You put me on the track? So I'm like, what are you talking about? So then he going to look at my mom and he was like, oh, that's my wife. Like, shh. I was like, oh, my God. So we kind of uh -huh. had like. 
funny moments with it, right, but he was right. trying to put me on the track. Right, right. You know what I'm saying?